Romania is known for its ancient castles and stunning mountains, which thousands of tourists come to visit each year. But there is another side of Romania that locals with rather tourists didn't see. Maria, uh, with her four children, they, they lived in one room. Being named as a Roma has the worst social stigma in Romania. The thing that you, we say to our children, if you're not behave, I'm going to give you to the, to the gypsies. A university in the capital, Bucharest, has introduced measures to help Romas integrate, while others believe it requires more than that. I don't truly believe there is a genuine desire to help this segment of pop the population. Now the question is, will Roma people ever be welcomed in Romania? Roma people have been around since the 14th century, where they immigrated from India to Europe. Romania has the largest Roma population in Europe, taking up 10% of the population. 300 kilometers north of the capital Bucharest lies the picturesque Sigeshoara. Tourists flock there every year to see the medieval citadel, and locals are keen that the Roma villages on the outskirts of town do nothing to spoil their experience. The truth is, even Romanians have a hard time dealing with the, with the Roma problem. Uh, you know, they have a history of 250, 300 years in Romania. They came in uh, as migrants, they, they were enslaved, and they were only, you know, set free, uh, you know, 1850s, so 150 years ago. Um, and they were never fully integrated. Um, but that is not to say that's not something they can offer. And of course, the Roma communities uh, around Romania, and, and especially the ones in Transylvania, they had for the longest time the tradition of you know, having um, a certain skills. And they would travel, they were travelers, and they would travel and set camp and, 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 and work in tin and gold and, uh, and metal and all that. But it's not something tourists uh, want to see when they come here. Nico Dumitru is Roma himself and grew up in a Roma community. He is now a leading Roma activist fighting for equality and acceptance of Roma citizens. Roma have been slaves for 500 years in Romania, which is the longest recorded slavery in the world. So for 500 years, they have been kept aside as slaves, basically, using, using them as slaves. And they were used with three types of slaves. There was uh, uh, state-owned slaves, there was private-owned slaves, and there was church slaves, which is the biggest part of it. Churches uh, uh, owned a lot of this land, like most half of Romania was owned by the church, so they had a lot of, uh, a lot of slaves. The slaves are usually placed around the cities, in small um, settlements, if you will, which they still are today. I mean, you could still find settlements of Roma. Historically, Roma people have also been divided into communities according to their special skill. So there are 13 kinds of different Roma, and all of them are um, on the skills, on their jobs. For example, I'm a blacksmith Roma. So what does that mean for me? It means culturally a lot of other things, because my, my own people had to, had to be blacksmiths. So you couldn't have a whole community of blacksmiths. You can only have one among Romanians, which would, you know, make their horseshoes, make their agricultural tools and so on. So by the nature of your, of your job, you would have a cultural pack around you. If you talk about, for example, um, um, let's say goldsmiths, goldsmiths would have to make their, their jewelry and gold to sell them, so they wouldn't be settled, so they would be travelers. My kind of people would, be, would have to be settled in order to do their job. So this is where, where there are differences among Roma. In the capital Bucharest, a university is taking actions to help integrate and educate Roma people. It is a regulation every year, uh, at least three uh, Roma. Uh, people are, um, have this chance to have free degree in our faculty. So one Roma for each program. Despite the effort, the University of Bucharest have had little success. In this class of journalism students, there is not a single Roma student present. The Roma students must bring several documents to prove that they are part of a Roma community. In uh, 2008, I think, we had uh, for each program at least one uh, Roma uh, candidate, but uh, starting with 2010, 
uh, there uh, are only one or two maximum. They are not so interested, and some of them want to be Romanian students, not Roma students. And they also have a kind of fellowship from the Romanian government. They are part, they are integrated very well. And uh, at master's degree, they declare themselves uh, as Roma students, not uh, Roman, uh, as, as Romanian students, not Roma students. Because I don't know, maybe it is a kind of discrimination uh, inside groups of students, I think, but uh, I don't know actually. Aerosol, which means enough, in Roma language, is an apolitical organization in Romania who combats racism and social, political and economic inequalities between Roma and the rest of the population. Aerosol was founded in 2018 as a response to the ignorance of racism towards Roma citizens. There's a lot of discrimination, of course, it's still happening. And you can find that even while entering clubs, for example, we've had a TV show about 10 years ago showing that Roma were not allowed in certain clubs in, in, in Bucharest and we had a candid camera and so on and we sued the club and so on. But there's a lot of that happening and you can, you can find that in schools, you can find that in society, you can find that everywhere basically. Everywhere you ask about Roma, people will just raise their eyebrow. And because there's, out of all of the sayings, out of all, all of the, I don't know, cultural background we have about Roma, all of it is negative. So you can't really, if, it, if it's so negative, then you can't really escape it uh, so easy, you know? Uh, for example, there's a saying, there's a Romanian saying, saying, uh, don't get drowned as a gypsy at the shore. Or if you're not, a thing that you, we say to our children, if you're not behave, I'm gonna give you to the, to the gypsies. You know, so we, we grow up with this, with this uh, notion of, of the boogeyman of the scapegoat, of the bad guy, you know? And actually, ourselves, we grow up with this as well, and we internalize it, and we say, yeah, we are the bad guys, you know? If 20 people say to me, I'm the bad guy, then I start becoming the bad guy, you know? In the capital Bucharest, there are more than 80,000 Roma children living and becking on the street, which further contributes to discrimination. I think they are two types of Roman people, well, one of them are uh, kind and polite and they want to show us that they can be uh, in another way than what we think. And uh, one of them can uh, uh, be really rude and uh, I don't know, they want to show us they, they are the boss in this world and I don't know. I'm a little afraid of Roman people, uh, so when uh, I'm in a place with them, I want to not be in their attention, to be a little in another. <laughs> I don't know, I don't have a nice impression about them, to be honest with you. And why is that? Uh, because some of them are stealing. If you are not gypsy, they are not treating you well. Veritas was set up by American students in 1997 and is the largest non-profit organization in Sigishwala, providing social, material, educational and spiritual support to over 300 people a week living in poverty. Now we go in Stefan Chalmare neighborhood where uh, the 60 families, Roma families, are living. It's um, I like that neighborhood very much because it's close to nature. They don't have electricity and water, running water. They have to take water down the hill. It's a wheel and they take water from there. So it's not an easy life, definitely, for them. Part of them, they have even toilets inside. So these houses that uh, you can come, come with me. These houses are... Um, with roof and brick houses, and they have even bathroom and toilets inside. So as I told you, you know, they, have, they are different, uh, different categories of Romas. Some of them are working, look at that house. So they are brick, brick uh, walls and uh, normal uh, roofs, even tile roofs. And they, have, they told me that they, are, uh, they have running water inside. And these are the poorest uh, from villages. 
So they came for, uh, from villages and they just uh, settled down here, you know. So years ago you couldn't see these poor houses. And four or five people live in one house, you said? Yeah four or five or even more, you know. So we had have that family, six, Maria, uh, with her four children, they, they lived in one room, you know, with uh, six of them in one room. And now they have two rooms. So that's, it's much better. And the behavior of the children has been improved because uh, now having their own corner and having their own space and bed, you know, can you imagine six people live, uh, sleeping in one, one bed? So where do they go to the bathroom if they don't have their own? They have in the back uh, part of the, of the proper uh, toilet and bath. They take a bath or they wash themselves in, uh, in uh, the gallons or the plastic things, you know, in, in the house. And the they don't have electricity, you No, say. no. They took from a neighbor, but that neighbor uh, uh, asked them for such a high price, equivalent of four houses, normal houses, and so they, they don't have any more electricity. But that's my main uh, priority now for them to, to have an electricity meter. There are 18 million people living in Romania. Over 600,000 of them are registered as Roma people, but estimates state that there are two to three million Roma people living in Romania. There's a lot of invisible Roma, like, like me for example, which just don't say they're Roma anymore, you know, and that's it. They, they, get the, they got rid of the problem. But I, I don't think that's getting rid of the problem, that's just putting it under the carpet. So first time I, I realized I was a Roma, because you don't really, I mean, my parents always told me, you're Roma, you know, but I didn't really know what that means. So first time I, I, I realized what that means is, so I came, I, I think I was about 11 or something, so I came back to f uh, some s football uh, uh, match with my friends, and I was waiting in the uh, bus station. And as I was waiting, I put my, my ass on top of this, this thing and put my feet here, because I was 11 and I wouldn't care, you know? And I just sat, and a couple of old people just came and sat next to me and said, look at this little crow, what is doing here, you know? And I was like, I just was not expecting, not expecting it, you know, it was just took me by surprise. I was like, what? Why would they refer to me? And I walked home, the two stations, and I thought, you know, I was like, what, what, why? Why? I mean, why wouldn't just, they, they just say I'm a punk, you know? And just, but refer to me as this. So this is the first time it really got me that I'm different and I should, you know, do, s because I'm different, I should do things differently, I should be more careful. As you go through life, you realize that you don't really need to demonstrate anything to anyone, you know, but you do that for a while, and I used to do it for a while. I had to be twice as good, twice as punctual, twice as, I mean, to overcome all of the stereotypes, you know, and we all kind of do this. We all kind of try not to be, run away from whatever they, box they put you in. But then you realize, there's nothing to prove and you, there's no reason for you to prove anything, you know? Are you, are you in a place where you can say proudly that you're Roma? I always say I'm proud uh, that I'm Roma and that's because I want to make the other people, you know, the two million that wouldn't say they're Roma, make them, you know, it's safe to say it's Roma now. Because also, like, for example, in the 30s, so my grandparents wouldn't say they're Roma because of the fear of the Nazis. So if they were Roma, the Nazis would take them and they were involved in the Holocaust. So they wouldn't want to go there anymore. So a lot of our parents stopped saying they're Roma to protect their, their, their children from Holocaust. Now, we're not in the same situation anymore, hopefully. I think so. Who knows? But I think it, there's a real plus in, in having proudness behind, behind saying they're Roma. Most Roma families live of less than three pounds a day, with 90% of Roma people living on or below the poverty line. The Veritas organization supports Roma people getting a job and keeping their job. And to break that circle of poverty, because uh, yeah, the Roma population is struggling with poverty, and to try to integrate them and to give them jobs, to support them, to monitorize them when they, they have a job, and to give the, everything they need to keep that job. It's not uh, an issue to find a job, the issue is to keep the, the job. Uh, and to, to, to be disciplined and to respect actually the rules that they are given by the 
employer. Because if you don't go to kindergarten, if you don't go to school, then that discipline is a lacking part. You know, it's not something that they don't want. It's something that they can't, they didn't learn it. It's something that they didn't gain through the early uh, uh, childhood. And so, yeah, it's a vicious circle, I would say. Salanta Sorli is one of the Roma businesses Veritas supported and they have been proven successful. I need the help and I ask uh, who helped me and the foundation Veritas helped me about this pro project, yes, and now it's ready. You see everything? And this was just an idea and uh, the foundation make uh, everything and help me about with this project. I want to help this community with this idea, maybe change something. With many Roma people still not integrated in the Romanian society, the newer generation might be the change needed to turn it around. No one really wants to deal with the Roma, the Roma problem. They, they know it is a problem in the sense that uh, the Roma community is not integrated. Um, a lot of them don't have jobs, they have n uh, no, no education, they have no skills, many of them. But I don't truly believe there is a genuine desire to help this segment of pop the population. But it has to do with a generation of people who grew up during communism, who they never really saw them as part of Romania. They were kind of uh, um, a sidekick of, you know, of every town or village. They were just a small community on the outskirts of the village who were just there, who were always blamed for whatever bad happened to the community, they were, you know, pretty much blamed for in the past. Um, I think as the new generation of, you know, uh, moves into position of influence in, in politics, that is going to change. Um, but that might take another 10, 15 years, that's the truth. The younger generation tends to be more tolerant and more accepting, and that's the truth. You know, we are more aware of the world around us. I, maybe I'm not even part of the young generation, but you're younger than me. You know, um, when you don't travel much, and when you're, you know, living in your own little universe, um, you can become nationalistic. You can become right-wing. You can become uh, isolated and and um, and uh, limited in your thinking. And that's the truth. As soon as you travel, as soon as you realize there's, you know, worlds out there, and then you realize there's other people of different skin color and different face shapes, and and, and, and Roma is just, Roma community is just, you know, a community of people who have great needs, who have never had the chances all Romanians had or other people in the world, who just need a chance and who, yes, they need a lot of work because generations of, of you know, after generations of people did not integrate or were taught not to integrate or not to mingle with the Romanian community. You know, it's, it's, it's a little bit both ways because for the longest time there was a resistance of the gypsies not to integrate. You know, they're intermarry. Uh, uh, they, they would never, you know, they would never purposely integrate into Romanian, into Romanian community. So there's a bit of work on, bo the both, on both sides, but as I said, the young generation, I think, will, will resolve this. Time resolves this. Can the Romanians also learn something from the Roma lifestyle? I think that uh, uh, having Roma people around us, it's um, uh, showing us a different, uh, a different approach of the life. They are living for today and uh, with, uh, without thinking about tomorrow, without having plans, future plans, you know. And think, I think this is something that is missing for Romanians. You know, they, li they, live, the, they live the life today. While Romania changes the future for Roma people, Nico has a piece of advice for a small Roma child. It's a rich culture. You should be proud of it. You have more than what the others have, not less. So you're as Romanian as the others, but you have something in plus. You should be proud of that. It's a rich culture. And it's also something that people crave, you know, about. 
For example, a darker skin is something which I find very beautiful. And that you should show the, your Roma, because Roma are not what people say about. Roma are like that, like, like you want to be. Can more Roma people turn their life around and find a way out of poverty? There's no solution, but what I think now, after these years of doing all these things, is that maybe the solution is political representation, and good political representation. These people need to organize and have themselves a representative in the local government so they can you know, move things for themselves, because nobody is going to do it for them. So what I'm doing now is call to action. Everyone should, should, you know, should participate to this and they should solve their own problems. They shouldn't be waiting for someone else to solve their problems. This is, will not happen. We, we had 30 years of that. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. So See? something needs to change, which is, uh, and it comes from each and every one of us, the change. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be waiting for someone else uh, coming to solve our problems because this is what's happening usually.